we're going to transition now to the web and I want you guys to think about participating along with us with this login. It's definitely optional, no pressure, but if you are so inclined, um, it's UO map reviewer and then understanding with an I or with a one for the I. Uh, so let me flip over to the policy map site. And I put those in the chat if you're typing challenged like I am. All right, so right up here where it says sign in, if you'd like to feel free to sign in with those credentials. Uh, but here we are at the Esri Maps for Public Policy site. And what I really like about this site is it's that collection that Jim mentioned earlier of hundreds of policy maps growing every single day. And we've got a whole bunch of different um, questions here where you can just get a pre-built collection of maps about things like people, housing, uh, all kinds of stuff, transit, youth, you name it. Um, and you can even take advantage of your current location if you'd like or a, a specific community of interest. So that's one way to get started. But for those of you who wanna dig a little bit deeper, this explore tab is where I like to live. And you can see we've got different categories of policy issues that we know are kind of in the, in the minds of a lot of policy makers at the moment. So here's economic opportunity, whole bunch of subcategories there, environment and natural, natural resources where a lot of you guys probably live, um, things like that. So where I personally live a lot is in housing policy wise. Um, so I'll type in Anaheim, California. And you can see that in this site, it pulls 171 maps that have to do with housing that have data for Anaheim. Um, so we can take a look at a few of them. Here's one called Where Are Mobile Homes? So if I view this, let's see what we get in Anaheim. Um, not too many mobile homes, but there are down here in this location. This is a great color and size map. So it's showing the percentage of mobile homes through the color and then the count of mobile homes in the size. So it's showing two uh, views of the same data in the one map. And if we click on it, we'll get even more information in the pop-up. So in this tract here, 26% uh, of housing units are these mobile homes. So I, I kind of like this map. I can add it to my collection. And so if you're browsing this site, feel free to build a collection yourself. And browsing a little bit more, this one looks kind of interesting. What percentage of housing units are single family detached homes? Also kind of few in Anaheim, but um, this one is also a color and size map, but this one takes advantage of that diverging color ramp that I mentioned with the 40 hour work week. And here it's anchored on the national average. Um, and we can see Anaheim is, is a little bit below the national average with the yellow, so probably more apartments um, than single family homes. A little bit different style of the color and size map here, we're showing size just by an outline rather than the symbol itself. Um, so I actually like this one too. I'll add it to my collection. And now you can see up here that um, another one's been added. I can toggle through both of these maps. They stay zoomed in to Anaheim. Let's look for one more. Um, 
renter households affected by severe burden cost or housing costs. So that 30% is what HUD calls burdensome. And then if you're spending 50% or more, it's considered severely burdensome. Um, so notice again, the, the title is slightly different from the legend. The legend often has much more detail, um, but the title is that attention grabbing question that we're really trying to answer and focus our map on almost like a headline you can think of it. So here in this tract in Anaheim, let's see what comes up in our pop-up. Oh man, 45% of household of renter households here are spending over half their income on housing. So I'll add that one to my collection. Now I've got three of three. Again, I can toggle through these. And what I really like is this share button. We can share it on social media. We can copy the link and embed this collection into an external website or a hub site or something like that. Um, it's also really easy to email um, this collection to a coworker. Let me show you what this looks like. It's a pre-populated email that has the map titles and then this link that they'll click on. It'll go directly to in this case, Anaheim, and um, we'll just show those three maps. Now, if you're signed in, which I hope some of you are, you can add all three maps to your favorites. So I wanna give you a few minutes now to peruse this site, pick a different topic, one that you're interested in, and go ahead and add a few um, to favorites, and I'll show you where that shows up in ArcGIS Online. I think we should be playing the Jeopardy music right now. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be signing in with these credentials, and I hope to see a few people marking things as favorites. And I'll get that up as to how that comes through, and then how you can go ahead and use these maps across ArcGIS Online. All right, well, hopefully some of you have had a minute or two um, to pick a map or so that you like to save and basically bookmark for future use. And when you're signed in up here, you'll be able to click on my favorites and see, I wonder if we can, I guess we'll sort by view count, why not? All right. Well, this looks like an interesting one. I'm not sure if it was um, in the policy map site or not, but say it was, and we were able to add it to my favorites like that. Um, you can then, oops, you can then uh, share and use this web map in a variety of different ways, which we'll get into in um, parts three and four. Um, it's very possible to open it and modify it, change the symbology, change the pop-up for a way that fits your needs. Say, this map is great, but it's about 80% of what I need, and I really need it to speak to this one other angle of this topic. Um, in section three, Jim will show you all about modifying 
um, maps. Um, so you want to use it as is. You can put it into a configurable app, which we'll get into, into a, a build your own web app or a story map if you want to tell a whole narrative around it and package it up really nicely in one uh, story. Um, or possibly you want to use this map in a dashboard that you're building. It's, it's easy to do. So these maps here are portable across the ArcGIS online suite of products. Um, I hope you've had a little bit of time to, to look around and explore the site. And uh, any questions before I pull up resources? We've got one about the default map on a screen, um, which looks like COVID cases, and they were asking if there was a way to change the default. Um, no, the default is actually a randomized map. So I actually got one about census self-response rates, um, and I, that's great that you got a COVID map. I think there's about three or four that it just kind of randomizes through. That's a great question. And they'll change too as, as different topics become more current. Um, we have a way mm -hmm. to update that. So it's basically um, whatever's in the news will be what the map is kind of rotating through? Or is it more random than that? Uh, I think that's that's fair to say. It's a it's a good map that that speaks to a very current topic. Gotcha. And then we have a what's the what's the difference between collect and favorite? Because I actually have the same question. Um, yeah, uh, good question. So um, it's possible to star these um, if say I want just this one to show up in my favorites, I can add it there. But the collection itself is one that stays zoomed into your particular area of interest and allows you to, to toggle through that carousel thing. You can share it as one group, one collection of maps. And then the favorites shows up in ArcGIS Online. So it's possible to add the whole collection to favorites here or just single maps by starring them here. Okay, for, I'm, I'm not seeing any other questions. I don't know if you want to wait one minute, but I think that's that's what we have. Okay. Great. Let me just close. Um, we'll we'll do a whole bunch of resources after the last segment, but um, we know four hours is a long commitment. So if we only have you for this time, I do want to leave you with a few things here. Um, this is the site we just explored. There's also ezraurl.com slash policy map tips, which is a story map that covers um, a lot of symbology focused tips about policy mapping. This policy map types is one that walks through this concept of the policy life cycle and what different types of maps you would need at each different stage. And then um, learn policy maps is a ArcGIS learn lesson pathway. And so it's like little different mini tutorials that build on one another. And, um, and it's a great way to to learn more if you're so inclined to do so.